that what you're already doing. So, Okay. 
Okay, so when when n is equal to two, you get the quaternion address. And I will also uh, I want to also give uh, the simplified notation for the quaternion algebra in the this, in the case where this is not good. So uh, when this is not true, and uh, okay, if k over n is quadratic extension, but that extension you just uh, take a square root of some uh, element from base field, right? So k will be given by a square root of uh, and the notation that we use is just a b b okay so cyclic algebras are important in the theory of uh, set classic algebras let me recall you a very old uh, open problem in uh, this context it is Albert, okay, let's take an uh, integer n. So we are asking whether the n torsion part, n torsion part of the ground group is generated by classes of cyclic algebras of degree dividing n. Yeah. Okay, so okay, let's uh, let me recall two important cases that when we know that uh, the result uh, uh, the problem has positive answer. Okay, so first first case when n is a power of the characteristic of your base field. Power of characteristic of f. This was uh, the, the problem has positive answer, and this was set up by Albert himself. And the second important case is when F contains N suit of unity, primitive N suit of unity. Unity, and this is. Uh, Mercurier and Susi. The case uh, uh, for n equal to this is uh, due to the Mercurier. And uh, let me also re recall you for the prime number, what we know. So when n, the smallest prime number, for the smallest prime numbers, we know that uh, the, the Column has positive answer. So for n, n equal to 2 and 3, this is in the characteristic n, this is due to Albert. And in characteristic not uh, uh, different than n, this is due to Mercury. Also for uh, n equal to 3, when uh, you don't have the roots of unity, this was set by Mercury. And uh, n equal 5, The problem uh, has positive answer also, and this is due to a unity. Okay, so it seems that the smallest number where the problem uh, is still open is n equal four. So okay, what characteristic is two? Albert Albert's result tells you that uh, the the problem has positive answer, and if characteristic is not to n square root of minus one is in the base field, then the clear system applies. But the case where the characteristic is not true and square root of minus one is not in the base field seems uh, still uh, open. So this will be the case that uh, I'll look over today. In the bell. Okay. Position one, and we'll be using this. I remember. Let Q be a division F quaternion F quaternion division algebra. G 
in algebra? The following are the values. One, two is in the power group is given as a tensor product of a some cyclic algebra of degree four with itself. Of degree four. And this is equivalent that the quaternion algebra has the following form. This T, where S is sum of two squared in F and okay T and no zero element in F. Okay, let me briefly uh, explain. Okay, let's see one in class two. Okay, cyclic algebra of degree four. So this is given by a cyclic uh, field extension of degree four, a generator, and some element T. And okay, then you have this J whose fourth power is T, right? And J commit with the uh, element of L in the following way. Okay. Take the quadratic subfield of uh, this cyclic extension. Okay. Well, this is well known for a quadratic uh, field extension to be uh, embedded in a cyclic uh, field extension of degree four. The necessary expression condition is that minus one is a norm from this quadratic extension, and this is uh, equivalent that it is given by. Okay, characteristic is not so anyway. It's given in this form, but for some. Sums of two square. You have this. Okay, the generator sigma the restriction uh, of sigma to k will give you the not linear automatism of k. And note also that k is the fixed field of uh, sigma square. Now you can see that j square commit with k because k is. Uh, Elements of K is fixed by sigma squared. So, in particular, it lies in the centralizer of K. So, this is a central simple algebra over K of the D2. And okay, it is uh, Brown equivalent to sigma, uh, your algebra extended over K. And uh, if you extend further over L, this is the subfield that I took from the algebra, right? It uh, is a subfield of TD4 in the central simple algebra of degree four, so all your algebra will split. So you see that this uh, quadratic subfield is contained. So if you take the cyclic algebra that you can construct by this quadratic extension, okay, it's of a morphism group, and J square, okay, if you take the square, you get T, right? The, the T here. So this quaternion algebra is a sub-algebra, sub but then degree is the same. So this, uh, uh, centralizer is just this quaternion algebra, but okay, so take this would be some case of x. I prefer to use this notation here. Okay, so let me write this again. So we have <coughs> my algebra extended to k is just given by xt, but one slot is in the base. But now I uh, apply the correct section. Okay, this is the notation that I will I will use again also. This is the notation for the correlation. So the C, the algebra is over F, right? So you extend and then if you take the uh, correlation again, degree is two, so it's just taking the tensor product with itself. So here you get C. And on the other hand, you have a continuum algebra where one, one of the slots is in the base field. So you apply, you use projection formula basically. So the, here you get the norm of, x t okay and okay one thing to note that here this the norm form of the norm of this x which is x in my side is not a square in the in the base field because otherwise uh, the square root of x times sigma square root of x will be in the base field which contradicts with the fact that sigma has all the form so this is not and then you can also see that uh, square root of uh, sigma x, square root of x times sigma, square root of x is fixed by uh, sigma squared, meaning that uh, it is in, the, in k. 
And since the degree of K over L is just two, this means that K is at the same time given by taking norm of this X, K F. Well, this is a square S. Then we say that the, the this two element refers by F square in the base field. Norm of X is just C square for some C in F. But for a quaternion algebra, squares we can just ignore. So this is just S T. And okay, this was my I I'm being one in size two, so this is my quaternion algebra. So my quaternion algebra is probably equivalent to this quaternion algebra given where the S is sum of two square. But okay, this is degree two, degree two, so it is actually isomorphic. S T. Okay, this gives you one in size two. Right? And for the other, uh, other direction, I will not write down, but to just uh, give you the idea. The fact that the only thing here that I should tell, okay, if Q is given, if my quaternion algebra is given like this, okay, uh, if you look the quadratic stuff here given by this S, if you have such a quadratic field extension, Okay, sum of two square. This means that minus one is a norm in this quadratic field extension. And as I said, this is exactly what you need to extend a quadratic extension and bet a quadratic extension into a cyclic field extension of degree four. So you will find this cyclic algebra, this cyclic field extension. But uh, of course, like uh, you extend also all the structure. Uh, the automorphism, it, it will extend to an uh, automorphism of F, F automorphism of L, which, uh, which um, when you uh, restrict it, you will recover your automorphism. So if you take the cyclic algebra that, uh, is, uh, that you can construct by this cyclic extension and the same T here, then you, that, uh, that will be the candidate for, for, uh, for this uh, item one. And uh, using what I just explained, if you take the if you take that uh, tensor product with itself, you will be completely okay. Projection formula <laughs> Yes. Formula. Yeah, so the, the only first part that you, you need to first, uh, in order to lift, you first lift the, the cyclic, uh, cyclic extension and then you are able to lift uh, the basically the quaternion algebra. And yeah, the tensor product is, is just the same argument as by Kangaroo Okay, so, well, okay, just let me, let me say this. Uh, not with this group, but this is uh, included in the paper of Tignor, David Lee, and Lam. Biquaternion algebras and uh, quartic uh, uh, extension. So this is this is known. Basically, basically it tells you that when a quaternion algebra is uh, is a square in the Lam, right? It has to have this form. So what we uh, what we do is. Uh, we generalize, that is, we give the necessary restriction condition for central super algebra of exponent two to be a square in the ground. So let me deduce that. The following are is given as in the first slide is given as tensor product of some central star algebra uh, with itself. The top product of a minus one is trivial in the third cohomology group of absolute Kelvin group. I, I use the usual notation. Third cohomology group of absolute Kelvin group with a coefficient in the 
separable group, a multiplicative group of separable closure of F, okay? And so is A is given in the ground group and sets of quaternion algebras which have this which has this nice form. Okay. Where SIs are sums of this thing. Okay. So okay, the easy the easiest uh, indication is three implies one. Let's start with that. This is just the applied proposition one. You see, for each of these uh, Quaternion algebra, you can use proposition one to lift, to lift to a uh, cyclic algebra of three before, and then tensor product is commutative. So you can, the C will be the uh, B will be the tensor product of this uh, cyclic three four algebra. Okay, just like proposition one. Okay, and one. Equivalence of one to two is uh, basically based on a uh, exact sequence of a uh, long exact sequence of uh, homology group. Let me explain. So we have second homology group of uh, let me first try second homology group of absolute fellow group with position in yet yeah, ground group. Uh, look at group of a separate closure of F and the same thing. And here, H to E. Okay, this is uh, yeah, taken, taken square. You have the short exact sequence of uh, uh, the normal modules, and if you can use this uh, long exact sequence of uh, at the level of homology, right? So, this is just multiplication by two, and this is connected to the data method. And, uh, Okay, I write homology group, but this I see always uh, just as ground group. This is ground group. And okay, my uh, algebra A, the class of algebra A, here actually I need it to go through that. And okay, uh, the, the paper that I mentioned, this implication also one to two that now I'm explaining. This also is included in the in, in the in this paper of Timur Lam and Elif. It's just uh, um, uh, they they basically compute what is this delta method for uh, for uh, two torsion part, for elements in two torsion part. So they compute that if your class is uh, in the two torsion part, then the image is given by taking couple of elements. So now. To deduce uh, implication one to two, uh, two is just to, to uh, read what means exactly here, right? Exact sequence. So, for example, the composition is uh, trivial, means that if you start with E, like one implies two, right? Start with E, and if this is A, then you end up with uh, zero. This implies one to two. And the other way around, the series A, the class of A is in the Brower, uh, two part of the Brower group uh, with cup product uh, with minus one, it's just is the image of delta. And if it is trivial, it comes from uh, a class. <laughs> just uh, just reading uh, what's, what means exact here. And what we do is that, well, this is equivalent, like, say, back to three. This formula, actually, we use that mu four times of two is z mod four. Yes, this formula is because uh, mu four times of two is zero four. The computation. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I it is uh, a well known uh, uh, exact mm -hmm. sequence, so indeed I am not it's surprised that it's a funny computation. Mm -hmm. But I know from, yeah, from that paper, I I, I saw the computation. And okay. And uh, yes, now one, two, 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 one, two
So uh, here again, the, is the actually we use the long axis of another cohomology uh, group, and and okay, when minus one is a is a uh, square, then the situation is easier. So I will let me explain the situation where uh, minus one is not a square. And then consider this quadratic field extension. And okay, the exact sequence here we use is the following. Okay, second topology group of absolute value group with coefficient group two. And here, okay. Okay, this is induced, this is induced by extending scalar, and this is the forest station map. And this is taking top product of the line scalar. Again, this is bravo two, two torsion part of the bravo two. That's the right person here because I'm actually interested in this part. Yes, so okay, one best thing that this is equivalent to this is the same type, uh, it's the same thing to infection actually. So I have basically a uh, cup for like with minus one is linear, right? It's mean that a maps under this map to zero, and here exactness mean that it comes from some class from here. So it means that you can find a central simple algebra over k. Of exponent two, such that a is given as correlation of this algebra. Okay, exponent b two means that a prime is given as tensor product of continuous algebras, and uh, k being as uh, just quadratic uh, quadratic field extension. I can have a nice representation for this uh, uh, continuous algebras. Basically, I can choose them to be the following form, k, right? so size by k, and the size by f, and now if we just compute the correlation of this uh, algebra, you have, yes, we use projection formula, So you take the norm of this size. So as I with norm of this size, I think is that norm of an element in this uh, field extension is just sum of two square. Yes, so let me rewrite. It's mean that it is it has a it has a response that I was saying. Okay, so this is put the proposition, and now using this we can uh, we can uh, deduce the theorem that I state. Well, photo should be part is generated. A class of cyclic algebras.
luego. Okay. So now we just yes, would be a direct conclusion. Okay, take a class in the photoshop part. Then uh, two times alpha is in the tutorship photoshop part, alpha you take in the photoshop part. So two times alpha is in the tutorship part, right? And uh, now we can apply composition proof. Means that two. This is given as sum of plus uh, of uh, this nice quaternion address. Okay, this is proposition two. And uh, now apply proposition one to each of these uh, quaternion address. You can lift it. And to find the cyclic address of the before class of cyclic address of the before before such that two two times alpha one, alpha i gives you this uh, this class, but we can write like this. So it's been that the two times the Difference of these classes is trivial in the Brown group. Hence, this is in the tutorial part. This lies in the tutorial part. And here I apply the material here. So I can find material. I can find a class of quaternion algebras and let's say quaternion algebras. And this means that okay, alpha is given as sum of these alpha i's, class of cyclic algebras of degree 4, and class of cyclic algebras of degree 2. Okay? So this proves the theorem, but I wanted to also give the index. You see, like this is, okay, already here, you can see that uh, the index of this alpha, for example, is bounded by uh, this, uh, you, can, you, can, you can bound in terms of this M and N, right? Okay, M, I will take care of it soon, but the already for this, this, uh, this part, what are they? Like I took the, I have a class, this class here, it is in the tutorial part and I applied the pre theorem. So this n is controlled by symbol length, right? Symbol length. Okay, exponent two, so let me put two. Do I need to recall a symbol length? Yes. So this n is controlled by symbol length, uh, symbol length of the field. So for uh, for the other part, let me introduce uh, let me introduce uh, another invariant. So for class in the four quotient part.
yes proposition to move the assessment to this slide. So, and let also set further mu of f is mu of the mu of alpha for the part of the brown group, and it, it doesn't exist, we just put the Okay, so here you see that M is controlled by this by this uh, invariant that I justified. So here, for example, we can now directly uh, give a bound for index uh, for exponent for algebras in terms of simple length and this new invariant that I defined, right? And uh, the thing is that. Symbol length uh, for non-real fields, we know that it is also uh, bounded by uh, univariant of f. So I want to see uh, what is the, uh, I want to give also the relation of this new invariant that I define with univariant. So we can obtain uh, bonds for the index of x comma four algebra in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, uh, univariant. Okay, let me first yeah, just state what we have now. Okay, if you take a class in the quotation part, then the index to the power n uh, with n at most two we have plus zero. And now I want to convert them into uh, univariant case. For, for no, no So, um, let me, yes, let me recall it. Okay. Invariant. Okay. Invariant of S. Okay. Invariant of S. We define the supreme of dimension of anisotropic quadratic form, right? Anisotropic torsion uh, quadratic form over F. Okay, torsion means that you combine an integer n such that the entropy of the quadratic form, quadratic form is hyperbolic. And uh, by annual lambs, we have also a situation of what uh, you invariant. The part that we are interested in is U prime, I would be not. Dimension of anisotropic quadratic form, anisotropic, um, such that two copy of your quadratic form is happening. Now let's recall the proposition two and uh, see the link with the left forms. Position the prime maybe. Put central subtract over f exponent two. And the third item was a is Okay. So if you have quaternion algebra, let's recall this. If you have quaternion algebra S T, you can represent this as a different invariant of its non-form, right? 
this is twofold set form S T. So if steps of product, then it will be some of these twofold set forms, right? And if uh, okay, this is here. If this is I are sums of two square, then you can see that two copy of this is hyperbolic, right? This is okay. Not hard to see because you will get triple step form and as I in uh, sums of two square, it, it means it's isotropic, but for step form isotropic and hyperbolicity is the same. But the thing is that uh, also like this is basically a characterization of uh, two torsion quadratic forms. So like for terminal a quadratic form two quadratic form and let's put dimension. In, in I2, the second uh, power of uh, fundamental idea in the weak ring. So, dimension is 2m plus 2. Then, two copy of this uh, quadratic form is hyperbolic. If and only if Q is weak equivalent to up to some uh, scalar AI. Where as I are something to square. Okay, so this is equivalent that A is given at the same time some quadratic form in I2 such that the two copy is uh, hyperbolic. Hyperbolic. And the dimension is really, uh, you can relate to it to the number of this potential address here. And dimension. So now I can uh, let's take a class from four. So the index, uh, okay, here I assume here. For a non real field, I will give the bound for non real field. So that is no real. And take just the proportion part, then the index. Oh, uh, wait. I should also first. Uh, Yes, being, uh, I should first uh, bond the, this, uh, this invariant that I defined, uh, which is invariant, this new prime. But okay, from here we can, from here already we can see. Let me maybe first. Uh, or, okay, let's rest right. I started. So, with n bond by t, invariant f. Minus one. Okay. Before I need to relate with position, we have this uh, invariant here is bounded by invariant f prime. 
you, you try and have them, of course you do, minus one. This you can see, yes, you can see from here. The number of the quaternion algebras here is uh, really uh, given by uh, the dimension of, uh, you can control the number of quaternion algebras, these nice quaternion algebras here, by the dimension of this uh, quadratic form, two torsion quadratic forms. So I think this is quite uh, clear. And now you can just reduce that. So index index of the um, or class, and we said it is bounded by two times u f plus symbol uh, length, and this is bounded by prime minus one. And symbol length, it is, uh, this is well known, it's bounded by u invariant of f, quotient, oh, sorry, quotient uh, two minus one. And uh, yes, it is clear that uh, u prime f is smaller than uh, u, uh, u f, and this gives you the, the bond. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, this uh, was uh, this was what I wanted to. Do you expect that this upper bound is tight? And ah yeah yes maybe I uh, yeah let's let's see for example for u variant four it says that exponent four algebras uh, index is bounded by eight and um, indeed we construct the uh, an, uh, an algebra an example to show that this is optimal so for u variant four uh, eight the bond here is uh, optimal but uh, other u variants I I don't know <laughs> for now. And so and uh, eight eight three eight yes. for exponent uh, uh, for four the bond it gives u uh, eight and uh, yes we constructed a field of u minus four where uh, and a division algebra of exponent four and uh, dv eight so that is optimal but for now uh, and for other uh, for other u uh, you invite audience? I, I don't know yet. Mm -hmm. Yes. Do you have anything that can generalize for the P square torsion form? Mm. Uh, well, uh, uh, for the well, here that I use the uh, invariant, I, I don't know actually, I didn't think about this uh, yet. But uh, yeah, like for example, um, whether P square torsion bar uh, is generated by specific algebras of uh, degree dividing by uh, P square. This is some, the first thing that I want to do indeed. Uh, instead of uh, two powers, I would uh, expect that uh, that could be that could be a possibility. Uh, like um, okay, I mean I get, I can give a sufficient condition for which uh, you need uh, you you. If you have a special condition to uh, to be uh, to be uh, satisfied for the p torsion part, uh, in order to deduce that the p square torsion part is generated by class of uh, this, mm, but for now, uh, yes, I don't know whether it it really satisfied. But the first uh, first step, uh, like where I, I use this taking square taking square, and then you have this log x acceptance of uh, cohomology group, like there, if you take the uh, Pete's power, right? You have again this uh, exact sequence at the level of homology group, and actually the right thing to consider F, uh, I, I assume uh, to contain Pete's root of unity for two. It's, it was um, obvious, so you couldn't see the the impact. But uh, in general, I I I, I assume uh, Pete's root of unity to be there, and there the setup is the same. But I couldn't check yet, but. Uh, and and then yeah, I, I can tell you uh, a sufficient condition for uh, other other powers of uh, P also, like for P power n torsion part and being uh, P P multiple in the Brouwer group, 
if you uh, if you uh, satisfy that, then you can deduce uh, fit power n plus one torsion part is such, is uh, uh, generated by this. But uh, I don't know yet for when it is satisfied. <laughs> yes. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> 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 